Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Croc 2. We're back in Swap Meet Pete's shop because the next level we're going to be needing an additional item. Pretty much I'm only going to be going into the shop in order to see what we can purchase when we need a new item that we haven't purchased before, so this is not going to happen very often. First off, we need another one of the Candy Craze flavored, but we also need a five flavor gummy saver. This is for double jumps, which is kind I don't know what it is with this game with its classification of double jumps and triple jumps, because uh, sometimes they're not right, but we do need one. And the last thing we need, of course, is one more Clockwork Gobo. Alright. Now we're all set to go. Oh. Oops. Sorry. I guess you can't give it a fit. I guess you can't give it a kiss. But anyway, we have three of the Golden Gobos. That door still does nothing. And we have two actual levels remaining. In each of the worlds, there's at least five levels. And this level is actually open. Hmm, that's interesting. But we won't actually be going here until a little bit later. Because we have two levels that were actually open to us before that one. First up, we're going to help this little guy. Not with that. Bow down to me. Yes. I feel your anguish. I am God to you. What's up, dude? No, not Birdie. No. Why Birdie? Why take it? Wait, who's Birdie? Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, what kind of Birdie is Birdie when you're a sailor village in a jungle? village is making less sense as I think about it. But anyway, Birdie! We gotta go save him! Save the bird from the thief! Who it looks like he was in prison. He's an ex-con. Oh god. This level honestly has an interesting style to it, and I'm not proving my point! <laughs> that's, that's excellent. When I mean that it has an excellent style to it, I mean that it has the feeling of a chase. It's not perfect by any means necessary, and I'm not going to waste my time getting that heart down there because I'm going to have to do the entire room over. But what you're pretty much doing is you're just chasing after the thief trying to get Birdie back. It's kind of cool, it has an excellent flow to it. Get the checkpoints when you can, and if there's anything in your way, like a log battle with Tarzans, then you should be... Oh, there we go. Okay, we're all good. And Hippo should not be friend of Thief. But it's when you hit this point that it kind of shaking his booty at me. <laughs> Hello, jerk. Huh. But this is kind of where it hits its snag, because there's going to be stuff off the beaten tra track of the linear level that it, you're gonna want to pick up. And that's when you see kind of like the ruse just kind of disappear because he will wait for you. He is in no hurry whatsoever. But yeah, in terms of concept of level, I like it. Uh, in terms of execution, it could do a, it could do a lot worse to be honest, but it could do better as well. The remix of this track is also one I kind of enjoy, too. But it's a lot of interesting platforming, actually. It's in this level, technically, that I get a more sense of, like, Croc can, is a little bit better in terms of the actions than he was in the last game, because I get the illusion, especially with going over these pillars back here, that he can jump a little bit higher regularly, which is kind of cool. Always hit those checkpoints. You never know when something bad is about to happen. 
Yeah, dude, where are you? There you are, shaking your booty. Crystals are pretty much no contest in order to actually pick up really easily, except for the ones off the beaten path. So, if you're hurting for crystals, this is pretty much a good place in order to get some more. And sometimes they do this. Hiding it off in the corner. A little bit sneaky that way, but... Eh, sometimes it happens. Now, you thought it was going to be all nice and smooth in this level, didn't you? Well, this is where it kind of gets a little bit platform... This becomes a little bit more of a challenge, because you have to deal with these boxes. If you're just getting used to the controls, this is one of the first challenges that you're probably going to have with this game. Because with this... Oh shoot, oh shoot, okay, we're good. I didn't want to fall down here immediately, but since we're down here, there's actually a path down here that leads to this. Jump pad, go! Colored crystal. Alright, now we can get back to actually getting to him. Ah, oh, my, oh, I am not in good shape. Oh, this is bad. Okay. This is probably going to be the first place that you're going to have a problem with. Because you really have to get used to how Croc controls in this game in order to make it work properly. Because you have only a little over a second before the box breaks, and then you're going to be plummeting to your death. So if you're having trouble with these specific doing 90 degree jumps up quickly off of platforms, go to the right side when you're facing when you're facing this way, because there is a platform right underneath that box that you can use as a safety um, safety area. The left is just lava, so mm, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble. All right, and a green jump pad, so we can use. And it actually says Gummy Savers on it. Hooah! And it leads to, of course, the Clockwork Gobo section. If you're ever looking for, like, a way to get a little bit faster, in terms of this, pretty much just hugging the corners of a track will get you some extra distance. But it's relatively easy in order to collect everything, like a heart pot and another heart. There was also a colored crystal in there, so that was a pretty important gobo segment. Okay, we're good. That hippo has no body. I'm gonna go check that. Or not. Hippo, you've betrayed me! Oh no, 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 no! Oh no! Hippo, why? Oh, he had no body, I swear. I'm gonna check that because now we have to continue because it's game over. What does that mean? It means we're kicked out and we have to do it again. When you, ha when you have to continue, you do start with your base three hearts. But you do keep your maximum capacity. Okay, I'll see you back at the hippo. Another thing I didn't mention about continuing was the fact that you do not get your items back that you've already used, and you also do not get your crystals back in your Swap Me Pete card, which means that if you're wanting to get everything in this level again, that you have to rebuy all of your items, which means redoing levels and just collecting crystals again. So yeah, it's a little bit annoying in order to continue, and it's going to take a lot, like, eat up a lot of time just for a little hippo body on a big hippo head. Thief, you are mine today. No way are you getting away from me now. No justice for you. But first a box. So you can slightly get away, away with everything. Full health. Good. Wasn't doing very well on health. For a big guy, he has quite a lot of stamina, I will say. He's been doing a lot of squats and running. But now it's time to fight! 
And Birdie is saved! Kind of. Uh, Bir Birdie? Bird Guys, I lost Birdie. <laughs> oh well. Um, Birdie saved, I guess. And we have our other kind of gong. It's a peat gong. It is serves at the end, it serves as an end of a level, but sneaky buggers that they are, they hid the last colored crystal behind the gong, so we still have to collect the golden gobo. This one isn't so hard to get. It's just going to be across a bunch of just simple platforming and Tarzan Dantinis. If your death perception is a little off, yes, they are swinging diagonally sometimes. So just be careful about that. Another issue with the Tarzan Dantinis is sometimes when you hit them, um, you can automatically just grasp onto their ropes. So if that happens, um, good luck. And there we go. Now we have everything. We are good to go. And the thief is dead. Long live the thief. So let's get out of here. The rather unfortunate thing about this game is that it doesn't have a victory fanfare for when you exit a level through the gong. It's just... solemn. Simple. Kinda sad, really. But we saved Birdie, I guess. Well, we should be good. So we did it! And now there's just one last level that we're gonna tackle for this video. And it has to do with this little special guy. Hmm... Now while I'm talking with this guy, there's actually one thing I'm wanting to do with this LP that was similar to the, to the last game. Um, if you remember from the last game, if you watched my LP, you would have noticed that I was spouting out interesting facts about the game, because I did some digging and found a great list. And that list also includes a lot of interesting facts about Croc 2 in general. Oh dear. Oh what? Sandwiches only? But the first interesting fact that I want to talk about is actually about the voices and how they were created. Listening to all the babbling you hear, the way they created it was actually they recorded words in English, and then they cut them up into just little bits and squeaks, and mixed them up all together. And you hear the babbling you hear before you. Amusingly about the voices is that they actually had to do a lot of tests to make sure that all of the squeaks, that some squeaks together, didn't sound like vague swear words, just to make it make sure that it was actually kid friendly, which is a kind of good for testing purposes, to be honest. So yeah, I just want to keep the interesting facts about the game just kind of going between the first game and this game, because there's actually a lot of interesting tidbits to inner details about the game and also the development process. Most likely I'll not, I'm not going to be doing it for every video, but well, every now and again if there's something interesting I might chime in for. Now before we head in here, we do need a green gummy, and we also need a clockwork gobo. And if you remember, from what he just said, we're going to be getting a sandwich back. Great level goal. Get the Golbo sandwich! Now another interesting thing that he actually said was, we actually get assistance in this level. The guy with the spring boots is actually going to help us along with some interesting things. And you are a jerk. Another thing that is introduced back into this game is hanging over grates. It's a little de detail like this that it shows that Croc is a little bit more spry compared to when he was in the last game because he moves a lot quicker. Another thing to remember about ranged enemies that use ranged attacks is that they still do not know what a Y coordinate is in order to shoot upwards. They just shoot along an X axis, so if you're above them, then you should be okay. Branching paths. Huh? 
Uh, let's just keep going straight for now. Now, the music in this level I kind of like just because of how spry Croc can be when he's climbing in different places. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, Croc. Do what you need to do. As long as you're up here getting the crystals, doing what you have to. But here is the first instance of what we need the Gobo with the Spring Boots to do. There's going to be instances of just platforms that are way out of reach in order for you to actually get to, but if we find an instance where he's actually helpful, then he won't have an X over top of him. And then we can press triangle and he'll do the job for us. Now, actually, I want to go back to this ledge because... Let's just check downwards. Oh, okay. Uh, don't go down there. <laughs> mm. But yeah, the music just kind of matches the movement speed of Croc just kind of in a peppy way, and it's it's good. I like it. Yep. Alright, let's head back and go into that other cave entrance. Now, I believe one thing that the uh, Gobo with the spring boots mentioned is that the boots actually came from the Professor. And we haven't really mentioned a lot about the story, but I'm going to be saving a little bit of that for the next video when story kind of comes into play a little bit more. Now I would like to go into this entrance, but there's a balloon over there, and right below is the Clockwork Gobo spot. Now this one is a little bit tricky because you're dealing with a 180 degree turnaround, and if you're kind of feeling that the Clockwork Gobo's controls are a little bit floaty, uh, don't worry, they kind of are. So you just kind of have to get used to it and just kind of work with the best of it. Bye, buddy. Alright. Now we get to do her ascent again. Descent, actually. Now this room is actually kind of cool, to be honest. The room pretty much is a vertical room, in all honesty. So you have this whole kind of apparatus here with the grade system. But where do you go from here? Well, there's this little spot over here, and it acts as a hanging elevator. And from here, you just repeat the process until you get to the very top. I think the only thing I really have to nitpick about this one particular room is that the ropes don't attach to each other. Great job! But there's a little, a little bit more to this room that actually meets the eye. You see, once we get to the next layer, I believe, we should be able to see something else. Yeah, see the heart on top? How are we ever supposed to get to that, you might be wondering. Well, if it's worth doing something hanging, it's worth doing this way. It's even better. Let's get the binoculars out. Not necessary, but the elevator does work if you're standing on top of it regularly. So if you're needing the extra heart, then that's how you're able to get to it, because otherwise, the next elevator over there actually goes sideways and takes you to the exit. Do I actually need it? No. But there's another thing that's hidden away in this room that we do need to pay attention to. That's over here, way over in the distance. Go, Spring Buddy! He's able to use them quite well. Don't know if I'd be able, ever be able to. Come on, go a little faster. Warp speed, please! Come on. Warp speed! Okay, we're good. Woohoo! 
Ah, don't giggle at me. Time to get my flow going. Hmm. Oh. Better not stop to rest when there's a wizard hidden you. Pay attention to what your enemies are. But you can see, well, if the draw distance was any help, that there is an entrance over there and a bridge over top. We can't really do anything because the camera won't help us, but because we can't actually get up that high. We probably could if we did a triple jump off of that box, but it's kind of pointless because, well, you'll see in a little bit. Hmm. Well, there's something off in the distance, but there's no way to get to it. We have a different box here, though. It's a crate that we can smash, but it does kind of release something. It's a platform box. The platforms are not necessarily random, even though they tend they can be at first glance, but just depending on what level it is, you'll get crumbling, you'll get straight platforms, or other things. I don't know why they give you crumbling platforms, because this just becomes a complete gauntlet of platform jumping that is really quick. So if you're not good at platform jumping, you're gonna be at a loss here. Blue crystal is ours. It's good to see a checkpoint. Sometimes I kind of think... Foiled, you wizard. Sometimes I kind of think that the checkpoints, well, they're very few and far between and aren't really utilized all that well. But yeah, now we're up here. So using the triple jump on that crate probably could get you up here, but there's really no reason to because you do come up here anyways. Thanks, dude. This is probably the first glance I got about how weird the crystals look compared to the last game, because the crystals had a more spherical look to them, whereas these ones have incredibly sharp points. So I thought at first glance that these crystals looked like spikes on top of the grate. Now I really haven't gone into full detail about how I feel about the graphics for this game compared to the last one. I feel that there was a downgrade for some reason. Like, the keys look a lot more jagged. I did mention that the gobos completely look like... Like, how the... what? Like, how do they look so polygonal when they kind of look so fuzzy in the first game? Like... It's sometimes weird how advancements in understanding, like, a console's limitations can make a game either look better or worse, and I usually find this with the just with the PlayStation 1. So we got another crate that was locked in a box of all things that creates more platforms. But there's a crate up above this. How are we supposed to get it when we're not able to actually like jump off a crate and head up there? Well remember our triple jump? The triple jump sometimes gives you enough height in order to get to high places like this. And it's a great thing to remember. It makes accessing areas like this a lot easier. Alright. Finally have our green pad, so let's make use of it. There we go. It leads us to our last five crystals. But where... Oh, where is our last colored crystal? We still need that. <gasps> the bird! Um, I think your sandwich is done for, dude. And besides, you're still in my custody, so you still have work to do. Get me that last colored crystal, please. Excellent. And right down below is our golden gobo area. Okay, exactly what am I looking at here? Oh, oh, there it is! Except that we do have to turn around in order to actually start getting to it. It's odd placement for an entrance of an area like this. 
and it's, it's not supposed to be that hard of a platform challenge. There's no risk of actually dying in this area, so it's pretty much a free golden gobo for you. There we go. And now we have all five for this world. Ugh. It's kind of creepy looking. <laughs> Alright, let's do something about the crow. And save what little sandwich is left of it. Yeah! Farewell, crow. Oh, look at that sandwich. Uh, it's not the best sandwich I've ever had. It has something purple in it. Purple, pink, why? Alright, we got it. And behind this gong is only a heart, so we're good to go and good to leave the stage. Are you really sure you want that sandwich, is all I'm saying. It's kind of been half eaten and pecked at by that crow. Well, hopefully nothing bad happens. But yeah, that is all five levels. I hope he enjoys the sandwich and his spring boots as well. I can see through his head what is going on with that. Oh boy. So that is all five levels. So what's left to do? Well, there is still this door here. It was originally barred off, but it actually opened when we, actually, when we had three golden gobos. But now that we have all five... We can head all the way back to this door, and now we can see that it opens. So we do have some last areas of this world in order to actually head into. And next time, we're actually going to go into the Golden Gobo door first before heading over and talking to the Distressed Gobo. Hey, King, what do you got to say? Okay, at least he's a nice guy, because he could probably not be a nice guy and be very similar to other Penny Pinchers in PS1 games. But anyway, yes. And I don't think we actually have to go to Swap Meet Pete for the next couple of areas that we're going to be going to in this world. So, next time, we're going to be seeing what we can find in this Golden Gobo door. See you next time, everyone!